streaming. Please start the preview player. Okay. Um, um, I think we're streaming, even though it says we're not. Start streaming. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How the devil are you? It is um, 1031. Ah, missed it by a minute. I tried to get it. I am, uh, well, this is ridiculous from a, from a weather point of view. Um, those of us from the lovely UK, of which there's quite a few of you I see here, and uh, are used to uh, pouring rain. And it has been a very, very rainy season out here in sunny Los Angeles. Hello, Adam. Hello, Dylan. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Chris. Hello, G Baxter. Mark. Sunny boy. Spectrum. Oh, hey, Spectrum 424. We reviewed your mix. And Paul and uh, um, Peter Samuelson, we reviewed yours as well. That's going to come up on Friday. And just Lisa. And just Lisa. Devin. Josh. Gary. Jack. Alexi. Adam. Chris. Gavin. Jack. Sir Egbert fart a lot. He's big, he's bad, and he's proved he's arrived. A good day. Oh, yes, happy Valentine's Day. Hello, Jeffrey in Virginia. Enrique Fernando. Toby, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh, Ronald. Danny. Hello, Lisa. Math uh, Matthias, or Matthias. I don't know uh, how to pronounce it properly. I'm sorry. Sean. Donna. Nathaniel. Clint. Blue Wave Dave. Wow. So many great people. And look, in the mix, Michael. Hey, Michael, we were with uh, David yesterday. The video is coming on well. He played me some of the stuff you've done. I'm very, very excited. Um, that's going to be a lot. Hello there in Germany. Hello, David. Hello, Adam. Kevin, rainy. Uh, uh, three days of rain in Ke Kevin. No, I think we're up to about 13 or four, maybe 15 days of rain now. It's been cr pretty crazy. Uh, I still am with the Art Easy uh, cons Conservatorium, yes. Um, very excited to work with them. They're really amazing. Um, Denmark. Nothing more romantic than mix automation, says Toby. Yes. Mix automation on a Valentine's Day Thursday. Uh, you know... So that's that's what we've got. And I'm trying to tell somebody something quickly. OK, Fantabula Russi. So we've got the mix that we were working on. Hello in France. Uh, oh, as Sean is saying, oh, yes, of course, please hit that like button. If you could hit the like button and that would let YouTube know that there's people watching it. So it's rather there's a usefulness to hitting it. If you hit that like button, it says to people, Whoa, there's me talking. If you hit that like button, it says, it says, hey, there's people watching the video. So please hit it. That would be absolutely stupendous. Oh, and I'm trying to turn off me talking here. Okay, so what happens is I make sure that this thing is working okay. And Eric's sitting over there and he's watching it as well. So it's rather, rather useful. Um, so please hit that like button. Um, and then YouTube will go, oh, wow, there's people here watching this video. We better let the world know. Well, the world, our subscribers. So oh, if you can share. Hello, Brian. All right. So do you remember what we were working on on Tuesday? I'm up here. Hey, this is what we're working on. Put on the headphones. This is a song called uh, The Owl Song. That's an owl song by me and the city. It's a sort of, um, you know, folky rock song, I suppose. We hadn't got to the backgrounds and we'd done some peripheral stuff on the lead vocal, but we definitely hadn't got to the backgrounds. Let's give it a quick listen. Hello, Joshua. Hi, Mark. Hi, Raphael. Hi, Dylan. Let's give this one a quick listen. Promise you'll be 
by my side and we'll heal. I go up in the dark unknown, where only fools and lovers go to hide. Promise you won't let me go alone. And all the things that I am not for you Promise that you always know the truth That there's so much more to these simple words And the promises that you always heard I don't care, just don't Okay, we got through the whole song. Didn't stop it. Didn't talk over it. Um, I like it. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, it definitely needs some automation. There's nothing going on with those oo-oo's, oo-oo's. And is that me singing? Yes, it's me with uh, the lead singer. Um, there's a couple of my old engineers singing on his own there, Phil. So there's three of him singing. There's one of David, the lead singer, and then the gang vocal is me and Phil and David. So yes, when you thought you heard me singing, that's because you did. So good spot, Lisa. Okay, so let's first of all take all of those gang vocals before we do any automation, because this was the last thing we had to do on the mix. So let's take that and create a gang vocal track. Um, we'll leave this one out of it for the time being, because it's just... Uh, um, so, well, with the 80s throwback one, you can go and download that from the Academy. Okay. So this, I'm not going to make it solo safe. For those of you who are using Pro Tools and also Apple guys or girls, you can hit Command or Apple, as we used to say, Command uh, on the solo, and it will gray it out, and now it's solo safe. Okay. So we're going to call that BV sub and just because we can we're going to call it bus and we're also going to call it auxiliary why am i doing that it's part of the joke it's just that people ask me you know what's the difference between a bus a sub and an auxiliary there isn't so just sometimes i go the subgroup or sometimes i i'm going to bus it sometimes i'm going to send it to an auxiliary it's i'm so used to living now in in the uk and the us that and traveling all over the place that everybody has a different name for it, depending on where you're from, but it's the same thing. Sub, bus, auxiliary. Okay. I'm going to send it to an aux. An aux. I'm going to send it to a bus. I'm going to send it to the subgroup. You know, the point is, is it's the same thing. It can be used in different contexts, but that's what it is. Okay. So now I'm going to do global stuff. With something like this, I'm not going to individually compress and EQ each single one. So I'm going to do it as a bus. So let's grab the whole thing and have a listen. Okay. 
okay, that's pretty underwhelming. There's no energy to it. It's like, uh, uh, I'm bored. So we're going to make it more exciting. I'm bored. Yes, I am. Okay, so <laughs> I think we were trying so hard to be an, an owl that we really didn't do it. So we could grab the Sherps Omni channel. Why don't we do that? Let's grab Andrew's channel um, and do a couple of things. Let's do some high passing. Wow, you can hear when I go from from here, which is 80 to 200, I take I cut off that low, last note, that low note. All right, I'm going up to 100. So it just seems anything above 100, I'm actually removing a ho, ho. I'm actually getting rid of that. So I don't want to kill it. Now let's give it some energy. It is boring sounding. Have a listen to this for 10 seconds. Bored. That's really boring sounding. Um, it, you can tell like we're also worried about going. Uh, uh, we want to get it right that we just hesitated to add energy. So that's where saturation can come in. Let's see if we can give it some energy. I don't remember what mic it was. It was probably whatever was in the room. There's not really anything special about this vocal sound, as you can tell. So I wouldn't recommend... Uh, it could have been just whatever was up. As Sheila says, it sounds timid. So we're, we're adding more saturation. It's getting a little better. So it's on the odd. Now I'm going to hit the even, see what happens. Pretty, pretty similar. Now let's hit the heavy. That's nice. I'm going to back the saturation down a bit. I'm going to add a little gate to it just to get rid of that headphone bleed. Add a little floor to it just so it doesn't completely disappear. Okay, it's getting closer. Now, before we do any other additional EQ, because I, I sort of want to get some grit in there. Like here, it defaults to 3K. Now I'm going to low pass it here. I don't need anything above six or seven. So let's go to seven. I'm actually going to take the low end up a bit. Back in the saturation off a little bit, and I'm going to apply some compression. Hi, Tim. A little bump at 2.5. Um, well, I'm bumping it at about 3 at the moment. Oh, yeah, please hit the like button. Okay. Um... Yeah, lots of good suggestions. Doubling. Yeah, we could try some doubling. I think delay into verb is probably where I'm going to go. I'm going to apply it to the channel itself. So rather than create a set... Oh, hit the mic. Sound like I dropped the mic. I'm going to apply it to the channel. Bush. Okay, so I'm going to apply it to the channel. Now, this is something I haven't yet used. So look, you see or hear on the Omni channel what they've done um, is you can add inserts and plugins here. So look, if I go along, I can grab like... 
Look at this. Isn't that cool? We can grab an Abbey Road. But what, let's not do that yet. Let's go in and grab an EQ, like an REQ. Look at this. It's just a great idea. So this is, I'm adding this to, so I'm going to do a little high passing at the end and low passing. Like that. That's pretty tasty, isn't it? It's really kind of cool. Look at that. Isn't that a great idea? It's a really, really cool idea. So now I can add something else afterwards. And let's go for a little delay. Um, let's go for the J... Th no, let's go to the... Let's go for the J37, yeah. Isn't this awesome? This is all added within the one plugin. This is the first time I've tried it. Yep, for real. First time I've tried it. Okay, so let's have a quick look here. Depth, flutter, formula, speed, 15 ips, delay, level. Oh, wow, you can get nutty on this. I think I like it, but I don't want to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I like this. I like the way this is controlled. So let's go for a second. Yeah, I'm not going to use it at the moment. Uh, 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 uh. It's really, really smart idea, though. I like it. Oh, I see. So... Let's have a look. Ah, I see what's going on. So it looks like I've chosen to use that instead. So let's get let's try something else then. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go and get the H delay instead and try and do everything I want to do with this one plugin. <laughs> That's much better. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now let's just grab, after this, it's going to grab uh, a reverb. I'm going to go basic. We're going to go deverb because we like to prove that you don't always need the fancy plugins. Kind of a bit. I love the fancy plugins, but it's also nice to use stock. So we'll come down. We're going to go medium room. Um, 750 seconds. Okay, like that. Maybe a little less. And then let's just whack. It's Now we're going to go and hit it with a sledgehammer. So I'm now going to hit it with a sledgehammer. After I've been all so subtle, I'm going to go along and smash the schnizzle out of it. So how am I going to smash the schnizzle? I'm going to grab an NV2. Now I have to decide, do I want to edit out those little breaths that should have been taken out? Probably. So let's just do that quickly because the gate is sort of hating them. So I'm just going to do that. This is like, this is part of mixing. It's part of mixing sometimes, even though we haven't moved to the automation portion yet. Part of it is doing edits. So, you know, I'm taking out those unwanted breaths that are causing the gate to kind of go... <laughs> <laughs> Even when I'm 
always stereo version. I mean, it's just, it, it, I'm using a stereo track, so that's the reason why I'm using it. Okay. Now, I like it. I'm going to back down the saturation just a little bit. I like breaths too, Scott. I just didn't need them in this situation. And because we were gating out some of the headphone bleed, you heard this, <laughs> this kind of choking sound. And it just, I don't want to spend hours trying to make a breath sound realistic when really it's not going to matter if I take it out. I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Devon. I... That the the uh, <clears throat> that isn't a stereo. This is a stereo version. It's in stereo. <clears throat> but if I open up an MV2 here, um, just to answer your question, because I think you may be a little uh, misled. If I open up here, you see it's mono. I always use the MV2 in mono. The only time it will ever be stereo is on a stereo um, is on a stereo source. Otherwise, the ones you always see me use are in mono. <laughs> Okay, so I took the 3K area, <clears throat> excuse me, and boosted it. Great. Okay, let's go to the bridge and just see how that one fares. I do I just highlighted them and muted them but you don't you you can do it any way you like and then of course what we could do is we could just do add a D at the front there and then on the back hit the G button and that will add in because we're in group add in a fade so D choose the area that you want the fade to start from in Pro Tools if you're a Pro Tools person obviously if you're on a different DAW there'll be a different quick keys but that's that's adding in the the fades so here i take this area here where i wanted to start from hit d and then it fades to the left of it to the beginning of it um and then vice versa you know here i'll hit g okay and we're just going to pretend that i've done the other areas because we're going to move on and do some automation okay let's have a listen to the song from the beginning um talking of cleaning up it looks like there there's some Schnizzle we need to get rid of. Um, okay. I'm like leaving the I like leaving the tambourine in for the camp for the count. I think it's rather good. Cause I didn't use the exciter because I'm not trying to boost the high end. I'm not trying to get it, I want it to be more mid-rangey. Somebody's making a point about one five, and that's that's interesting. It, it could do with a little bit, but it's interesting. I actually wouldn't have said one five. I would have said seven, six and seven hundred area on a hall. But it's part of the characteristics. We have to be careful not to get too crazy. But if let's just say, so you've got one here called tone. So if I go to like, let's go to about seven eight. Uh, let's go about seven fifty. <laughs> That's it for me. So it's about half of what you said. It's the octave down. See, that really changed the work. That's 750. Was that a sample tambourine? Heck no. <laughs> uh, that's definitely not a sample. I mean, look how uneven the hits are. <laughs> we can bring it down because people are finding it too harsh. I really don't think it's that harsh, but 
All right, our first piece of automation, automating the tambourine. We're bringing the tambourine down. No, it's definitely not a sample. You can see how uneven it is. So let's have a listen um, from the point of view of um, automation. Though my mind has slipped away from me Promise you'll be by my side and we'll Go up in the dark unknown Where only fools and lovers go to hide Promise you won't Okay, so I, I think, um, what are we going to do? We need to, the chorus, um, you know, uh, you know, the chorus doesn't really lift, does it? So let's have a listen. I think the woohoos, woohoos can come up. I, I'm not sure if they need to be that loud in the beginning. Let's have a listen. It's interesting because the beginning feels like you don't know the song's coming in. So to have a massive dynamic at the beginning might not be pertinent. But let's see. Let's, so let's go to this first, you know, hook section. I definitely don't think that's a sample. I mean, I'm impressed that somebody thought that was a sample. Um, okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some subtle kind of thing. So I've got a, the, my kick sub here. I'm just gonna push, I'm just gonna push the drums a little bit. So I'm actually gonna add a DB on the kick here um, and also a DB on the snare. Just, that's all I'm going to do. Um, well, not all I'm going to do. I'm also going to add a little bit more verb on the snare as well. Say another DB. So that way, these pushes are going to be in this section. It's going to allow me to add the energy up and then think about, well, what would I do? You know, what would I do to make everything else match? So... Let's go to our last section here. So we've got the kick sub, the snare sub, and the snare verb. And I might actually do the bit, a little bit more kick verb as well. So we're doing what we're doing is we're doing little pushes on the drums there. And that will sort of force me into going, well, look, the drum energy just went up a little bit. Only a tiny amount. Now I've got to bring things up with it. So... What can we do? Let's have a quick listen to the, the bass line. Let's give our bass a little push. Maybe come up a DB. Let's see how that feels now, just that lift. It's, it, the energy came up. Do you hear the energy coming up now? Now the woohoos need to feel like they need to come up a little bit, but that was a huge difference for me. Huge. 
we, I might go back to the, and this is just subtle things, but you see how automation just changes everything about this. Um, it's, it was a huge, huge things. Now we'll go and get the ooze now and bring those up. I haven't even wanted to turn up the uh, guitars yet. And I don't know if I necessarily will, but so now what we're going to do is bring up the ooze. I actually think bringing them up a couple of dB, have a listen. Here's 2.1 two two dB. <laughs> Okay, bring the ooze down. Uh, so so what, it's gone up 1.5 dB from where it was, which is quite a lot. You can hear that 1.5 dB is a huge amount. Okay, so let's go back a little bit in the verse and see how that build comes up. Go alone. I mean, to me, that feels like an, it doesn't actually feel like it um, It was any kind of real lift. I mean, it was a lift, like it got bigger. I actually think we compensated maybe for the energy in the music not being quite there. The same thing we did with the oohs, we added saturation. So we're not going in there necessarily and like doing like, you know, um, you know, Nirvana. Remember everything in Nirvana was like, doom, 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 doom. Here we are now. And everything just got huge. And it was like the most basic production idea. It was like bass, drums, vocal. Um, and then suddenly bass, drums, vocal, and huge guitars on left and right. We're not doing anything quite so silly as that. We're just bringing in some subtle automation, some very subtle automation to make it feel like um, does it bother me that the occasional transient is clipping on the master fader? Um, see, there you go. There's the, there's the issue. You, 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 you ask a question, which is not actually a question. You're saying, does it's clipping? There is an occasional transient clip. No, it doesn't bother me at all. First of all, we're in modern DAWs, which 32 bit, um, uh, floating. And secondly, a transient for a nanosecond. If I put a compression on that, you wouldn't even see it. What we're doing here is we're not using any plugins on our master fader at all. Go up in the dark we're only fools in I mean, basically, um, it's not audible clipping. Um, it's very interesting because we had a great, uh, uh, um, you know, it's not, it's not audible clipping and to be honest, if I was to stick a, a compressor on there, which I'm not going to, I'm not even going to go to the master fader at the moment, you wouldn't see the clipping anymore. So you've got to you've got to use your ears on this stuff and not go, oh, because as soon as I put a compressor on here, let's just say I do this, for instance, and this is why I, it's interesting you pointed out, because look, if I grab an L2, for instance, and just do this, I'll go to the chorus now. What happened? You don't see any clipping. Okay, so you understand my point. You don't see the clipping. And there's not any visible attenuation anymore. Look, there's no attenuation. But so this is really, really important. This is the number one reason why I don't put anything on my master bus unless I have to. And I do it because I'm, you do not mix in reverse. Don't don't sort of like look at your master bus and then mix into it. It's like that is one of the, the biggest misconceptions is this whole like, you know, top down mixing. Yes, if you load a bunch of compression and EQ and limiting on it, it can be very, very easy to get a mix. But here we have a good sounding mix without doing that.
Yeah, Tom says, Andrew Shep says he puts a limiter on it just to keep the red lights off. Yeah, there you go. Maybe I'll just leave that on there so we, nobody, uh, nobody points out that they're seeing, seeing some clipping. I'm seeing some clipping. Does anybody see any? <laughs> All right. All the things that I am not for you Promise that you always know the truth That there's so much more to these simple words Than the promises that you always heard I don't care, just don't So that's interesting. So I feel like that little, that little um, hit there on the snare needs some more drama. So let's find that hit on the snare. We're looking for little automation points. Oh, by the way, we went past a giveaway. Should have done a giveaway. So what we're doing is we're giving away the Richard Furch course, three copies of it. And then the last one we're going to do, we're also going to do a year's membership to the Academy. Okay, so. Um, the Richard Furch course is one of my favorite courses. It's one, it's pretty darn amazing. Richard, as those of you may know, um, worked on, uh, on Lotus Flower, this amazing Prince album. Um, so it's really, really, really amazing album and super talented guy. And his course is absolutely insane. So you're going to win a copy of the course. Okay. So, um, uh, 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 um, I see some interesting comments about um, about the mix and stuff like that. I think one thing that's important that gets very very lost is you know when you're mixing, it's you're not you don't it's not always applying the same ideas. And I hear I hear people like having the same problems with mixes. Um, you know they'll they they will look for, to solve problems that aren't necessarily there. If there's something you're always looking for in music, then it's very genre based. It's very important to be very open to all of the different genres that, that are there. Super, super important. Okay. So like this song is not supposed to be metal. It's not supposed to have like a guitar screaming at the end. I don't need it to be any more exciting than it is. Um, this song is like really Great for things like film and TV and commercials because it's super simple. When you listen to Mumford and Sons, you don't want it to be like, you know, a metal guitar comes in at the end or something like that. So anyway, let's have a listen to what's going on with the snare. It's pretty undynamic. If anything, let's have a listen to a sample we put in. I see what's happening. Have a listen to this live one together. <laughs> He's definitely snappier on the hit. So I'm actually going to push the sample a little bit here. So let's just do some basic automation. So I've highlighted the region that I want to push up and I'm going to push it up. Let's have a listen to that in the context of the mix. It's good, but why don't we um, also, if I highlight the area I want and then come down here, okay, let's go in. 
Well, firstly, let's go in and just bring up the snare. I'm going to use... There we go. So all I've done is brought, brought up the reverb the same as it would be in the, ver in the chorus, sorry. That's better, but why don't we get a little bit more dramatic on it? So we'll come down here, grab the area of the snare here. And give us a bit of pre-roll to see if we've got the drama. That's quite a lot. Might be a little dramatic, but definitely more exciting now. I like that. I like that. I think we can bring down the, the sample that we added just a little bit. Because it's not a it's not a it's just trying to add a subtle amount of drama, more about the performance. I'm going to grab the live snare and push that a little bit. I'm also going to bring up the snare sub here. Okay. So the overall live snare and everything. Subtle it. Okay. Yeah, these are really subtle little automation ideas. It's one of the things that I see a lot of people don't do. They don't spend any time on doing basic automation, which will really add excitement to your song. Okay, so let us... Um, so let us... Um, what do we want to talk about now? I want to give away this Richard Furch course, and we're already 13 minutes past the giveaway time. So... What have we talked about? Um, do you use automation? Are you big on doing automation stuff? Um, so I think, you know, I'd like to know what automation in, what are you automating in? What is your DAW? What DAW do you use? And are you really into automation? Because this is the stuff that really, really makes mixes great. Um, how much... How long do you spend on automation usually? I do the automation always at the end. So what DAW are you in, number one? And do you automate? Do you really get into doing these kind of subtle things? Sean says yes. Sean, what, uh, what DAW do you use? And remember, anybody can enter. And, and it's okay if you're still... See, great answer. Anita says, guilty lacking on the automation department. And remember, we're doing three of these. The last one will also be a year's membership to the Academy. Uh, do you automate uh, when you use plugins? Um, yes, I automate with plugins. I use the automation inside of plugins. I use volume automation. I do all of those stuff. Let's have a listen to this section here. Okay, I think that could be more dramatic, don't you? So why don't we make that a little bit more dramatic? So we're going to grab that whole section right up to this kick here. Let's grab it. So firstly, let's turn it down. And then let's build it more. So this is the kick build. Let's have a listen now. I like that. So subtle things. We're, in, we're, we're enhancing his performance a little bit more. We're giving him a little bit more. Right. Next thing we're going to do is take that uh, tambourine and bring it the heck down. It doesn't need to be quite so crazy. So he's doing it inside of the drum performance. It's mainly in the overheads. So I'm going to do a couple of things. Firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab a cymbal. So this is the kind of schnizzle that we do. 
So I'm going to grab a symbol. Let's give it a listen, but I think this is the one I want. somebody's giving me their politics how strange this is a music channel it never ceases to amaze me that uh, people want to talk politics in any way shape or form and my hair they they like talking about my hair so you know i'm it's always strange that anybody would mention hair we're in the music industry for goodness sake <laughs> You know, in the music industry, people have crazy hair. They dye their hair. They cut it in weird shapes and sizes. Please feel free to do the very same. Okay. Um, uh, 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 uh. That's the one I want. Okay, so... What am I doing? The re Why am I doing this? Because I'm going to do some automation. And um, on the overheads, it's printing. And then the drums in general, it's printing super, you know, there's too much. He's playing his um, tambourine super, super hard. So he's probably hitting it with a stick. So you see here where that last symbol is. I'm going to put this symbol in instead, which is just one we grabbed like this. I'm going to make sure this goes through the same bus, one and two. And then you see, I'm actually going to take where that first symbol hit is. You know, it's probably on his hat. Yeah, it's on his hat. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up until where's the last hit? there so that's the last hit and this is the first hit okay so what are we going to do well we're going to go and dum -de dum 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 we're going to go to our group drum group in fact no i'm not I'm not going to do it from the drum group. I'll do it on the individual elements in this instance, believe it or not. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I don't want all of the ambience to go, and I don't necess necessarily need all of the tambourine to go. I'm just going to get rid of a lot of it. So let's have a listen. Quite a dramatic thing there, a little bit too much. So let's take our symbol and... So we need to get subtle on this. We need this to be nice and subtle. Still too much. But you see how automation is really helping us here. Now, that symbol decay is a little stunted. So why don't we do this? This is some, we'll have some fun here. Let's do this. So I'm going to take the symbol and I'm going to grab a reverb, just a D verb, something really, really basic with a huge decay. See what I did? And now, you know what? I'm going to gain that. So do you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm creating reverb on the end of that. I'm actually now going to gain it up a bit. Okay, so what did I do? I added a huge. Why did I do that? So it decays nicely. Now, here's now the symbol. That's pretty tasty. Let's put it in the track.
Yeah, Gotcha is saying, why do I use Dverb so much? Is it because of, yeah, it is. Um, you know, it was really, it, it really is. It's just, it's simple, straightforward, comes free, and I can highly recommend it. I mean, that's a big deal for me. I need to be able to stand behind things that I know everybody can afford. You know, or why would I want to be like, oh, you know, this is an amazing plugin that's $5 million. You know, nobody's paying me to talk about these plugins. So I'm just, you know, this we've used everything. Here we have used Avid, comes free, lots of it. We've used some Waves, used some IK Multimedia. We're just using whatever we think is best. <laughs> going to move this symbol up so we don't hear the ding. I'm actually going to put a little tiny fade in there at the front. Let's have a listen. Ah, look at that. Too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not as natural as I want it to be. This is where you have to get to have fun. I just, it's in my sample library. I have thousands and thousands of samples. Now, just for schnitz and sniggles, let's have a listen. So now I'm going to. So we've got a kick hit here, which lasts just a nanosecond. So just do some little automation stuff. I love doing this kind of stuff. So what do we, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to come in, and here's my drum bus, and I'm just going to raise this. Uh, uh, uh just for a second, just because I can. Why the heck not? Love it. Okay, here's another thing about mixing. Don't be afraid to edit things to sound better. This bass is a little in front. Okay, so I just dragging that back. Now I brought the the bass back with the kick. This one's slightly in front, just a little bit. It just is taking away what feels good about that section. Okay.
Okay, so we made that a little bit more dramatic. It's never going to get to be like hugely, whoa, you know, uh, uh, it's going to have a little bit of that sort of, you know, excitement as much as we can. So it's fun. Okay. Um... So the question is, do we like these down oo-oos? It's a tough one. <clears throat> a drone under the ooze. Yeah, I mean, you should try it. Clay, download the multi-tracks in the Academy and try all these kind of different things. Yes, my samples have been in tons and tons of different things. Um, okay, yeah, I've used them on all kinds of albums. So let's have a listen from the top and see if we can spot some other automation points. One of the problems with spending a long time like we've just done, I've just done in one area, is get a little obsessed. And we need to move away from it because the whole idea is that section's supposed to come down in intensity. So to make it more interesting might actually be the reverse of what we're supposed to be doing. Though my mind has slipped away from me Promise you'll be by my side and we'll Go up in the dark unknown Where only fools and lovers go to hide Promise you won't
Cool. So a couple of things. Um, I'm, I didn't see any. Uh, I saw lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of, uh, yeah, like Corby's saying, Subaru commercial for sure. I mean, he's probably trying to, to troll me a little bit, but the reality is, is like, that's what it is. It's that kind of song. It's for a commercial. Th these are what these get l used for. You know, this is where it's supposed to be that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so the reality is, is like, it's pretty close. It's like, do we want to bring out, um, um, you know, do we want to bring out like little elements to sort of make it, um, oh, okay, you are enjoying the song. I couldn't tell because... <laughs> <laughs> um, because I'm reading a couple of uh, comments, you know, of, of, of people getting a little superior with us. Um, OK, so I appreciate the uh, the positiveness. So a couple of things um, that I missed is like on the guitar. I love this guitar here. Yes, Normand. Um, I believe it is, uh, we are live. So that's why I'm responding to you. So what I want to do is, is create a little bit of verb on that guitar. Just a shade, just a tiny bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is create an input. Let's say... So it's 31, 32, but I'm only going to go in on 32 because, so I'm going to call it LP as in Les Paul, verb. And remember, we're going to use a multi-mono. Uh, 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 uh. You know what? We're going to do something different. We're going to make it even more straightforward because I know people, people got a little confused about the multi-mono and the stereo. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a mono only, mono only auxiliary, and I'm going to call it Les Paul Reverb, and I'm going to grab, do, 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 again, just a D verb, and we are going to come out 32 only. And here, I already clicked on the option. It went to zero. And... So it's panned almost entirely. Well, it's panned straight to the right almost entirely. Thank you, George. I appreciate it. Thanks, Corby. Yeah, <laughs> I was just reading these comments of people that, you know, that know best. Uh, somebody was making a comment like, I can tell it's mixed on headphones. It's like, really? Um, you know, there's so many. The reason why we're mixing on headphones, just just to be really super, super clear, is because so many of you only mix on headphones and that's all you have. Um, let's let's get let's let's have our serious moment of Zen. OK, so. I have an SSL console here, and I mix hybrid through an SSL console quite quite often. I have Genelix, I have Focals, I have the Callies, I have Unity Super Rocks. I'm really blessed to have a lot of really amazingly expensive equipment, and I've been doing this a long time, and I've built this up. And the reason why we do this, and we do it mixing in the box, is we want to break down some stereotypes. And the reason why we use headphones like the blue headphones, which are a couple of hundred dollars. The reason why we do that and the reason why I'm mixing using the latest Pro Tools and I'm using a lot of stock plugins and occasionally picking up some fun stuff. The reason why we do this so that everybody is clear is so we can help people. Not to be superior, not to go, oh my God, you know, I can tell you're mixing on headphones. You know, that's not going to work. We're here to help people to help people because not everybody has the access to this kind of, of, of uh, uh, you know, this kind of, you know, superior kind of things. I love being able to help people. So this is what it is. Um, you know, so I think it's really, really important for us to remember the reason why we do this 
is to break down the barriers and you know you know this this is you know this is where it is okay here we go as christian is saying who is buying and can afford ssl consoles you know um and i think that that's really what it's about it's to help people and Oh, you're not offending me at all, Jacob. That's a serious question. I mean, a good mix engineer should be able to um, enhance what you said. So thank you, Blue Wave, Dave. Yeah, this is all about this is all about helping people. And, you know, and if if you're here telling us that, you know, it would be better if you did it on tape or you did this or did that. I agree. That's really entirely your world. But here, the reason why we mix stuff on headphones and do this is, is to help a lot of people. This is all about community and helping. Not exactly. As Panacea Studio says, not everybody has this kind of stuff. We're deliberately mixing on headphones. The reason why this series of videos has been called Mixing on Head um, Headphones is because of that. Yeah, and the electricity bill is massive for my SSL. You'll be by my side and we'll yeah, so we're using for for monitoring. Um, we do like the sonar works, which will flatten your headphones out, which will really help you for the low end. If you're an academy member, you can get a discount. I'm not sure where that discount page is because I'm not looking at it at the moment, but you can definitely get it. Even when I'm cold and gray. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, Ted. You all rock. Yes, we're always going to get that one guy or girl. It's not always, but you know, that knows the best and is telling us we're all doing it wrong. But the reality is, is like, you know, that's exactly what my friend Jack Douglas said. He goes, I don't like experts. I said, why? He goes, because they're telling us, they're the ones telling me I'm doing it wrong. And luckily he made some of the best records of all time. And he says he's not an expert. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of pushes in the chorus with the piano. Let's have a quick listen. I'm only coming at 0.5 of a dB, but there's a couple of things that I liked, like this. Remember this part? That there's so much it's almost loud enough, but let's just bring it up a little bit because it's a nice little bump, blum, blum. That there's so much more to this. I think another thing we can do as well, and I'm still hearing it, is push the reverb. By the way, we need to do another giveaway. Um, we have to do two more. <laughs> this one's to win the, win the Richard Furch course, which I believe uh, Matt is doing a deal on at the moment as well. Is that correct, Matt? Can you buy it super cheap today? Please let us know and put that up. Um, yeah, Enrique says that headphones, definitely there's some super great low end on these headphones. So it's nice to use the Sonoworks just to control that. Um, okay, I see we have 350 people watching. Thank you ever so much. Please hit that like button. That would be amazing. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, we're turning that up. A dB on the verb, and we're going to give it a listen.
There's something about that snare bottom I'm not digging. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it bothers me most here. I'm going to put a tiny, it says a little bit of 100 I already put on here. Um, All right, I, I sped up the attack on the expand. Do you hear it shortening a little bit? Take that off. I like that. Oh, subtle difference made a huge, huge difference. Sometimes, you know, uh, you don't have to do drastic things. You just have to do subtle things. I'm going to readdress the balance a little bit in the choruses by just turning up the um, just turning up the sample snare half a dB. Just readdressed it very very subtly. So now the sample is going to come up just half a dB from where it was at. Great question. So Zach says, does 0.5 of a dB in digital equal 0.5 of a dB in perceived loudness? Well, obviously 0.5 of a dB is not a huge amount, and a lot of people cannot hear that. However, the, the snare top, the sample, and the snare bottom are being bussed. So what's happening is it's changing the relationship between all of those things. What's interesting, can you see that? There's been some weird edit happening and the snare bottom is not playing there. That is really weird. So we're gonna add that back on the flam. So it's more about the relationship change that happens when you do that. You know we flipped the phase on the sample, by the way. If you're going to spot the fact that the uh, phase is out, it actually was flipped. Okay, so so what we're doing is we're adding this snare bottom in here. So for those of you that are spotting that the phase is slightly wrong, we did flip it. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like now. I think that might solve that little... I think one thing we can take away from this stuff um, is that these subtle movements can make a huge difference. You know, the fact that we're readdressing the snare, so we're pushing the sample very slightly. Um, we we took, put the expander on a little bit more aggressively on the snare, so it didn't seem to be going pff, pff, rattling quite so badly and made a huge difference. Okay, great. Um, so let's do another giveaway. This is a, we've got two more to do. And we've only got 15 minutes. So. On this giveaway, I want to know, we already talked about what, um, and this is a giveaway for the Richard Furch course. Ah, thank you, Ted Perrett. You rock. Um, you are wonderful. It's interesting because I really believe in, uh, in community. And so what I find is that, um, that's okay, uh, John. Uh, you know, it, um, it's, uh, it's interesting. That's not an apology, though. Sorry you took offense. <laughs> Um, 
So what's interesting, you see, because I to me it's really super like important that we have a really good sense of uh, of a um, community here, and I know a lot of guys I know that do these don't read the comments because there was always you know people saying that they they're doing something wrong, um, but to me it's really really important that we all share stuff here and we keep it super super positive. Those of you and there's quite a few of you that are academy members know that it is really insanely positive in there, and. Everybody helps each other. I think that, um, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's really, really important, you know, not to be superior, not to tell each other off and say that you know best, because the reality is, is like, that's what makes music amazing is this um, uh, this wonderful, wonderful world where we all allow each other to do things the way we do and encourage each other. It's really important to me to encourage not to be the guy or the girl that tells everybody they're doing it wrong. Because I learn so much from my clients. I get guys and girls coming in here who have really, really amazing ideas that I would never come up with. So thank you, Ted, for that, for the 20 bucks. You just bought us um, some breakfast and stuff. And happy Valentine's Day to everybody watching. Um, so my question is, is what is your favorite plugin? What is your go-to plugin? What is the one plug in um that you always always use what is your number one thank you daniel yes it's all about being positive if you know best then there's plenty of channels that to go to that that you can have fights with um i don't know best okay What's the one plugin? You just have to tell us what's the one plugin. And then after that, we're going to do another giveaway. You'll be by my side and we'll go off in the dark unknown. We're only fools in love. Sorry if I wasn't being clear. It's not so much your favorite. What is the one that you find yourself using most? It doesn't have to be a favorite. It's just like before you know it, you realize. I find that the D-verb I use a lot. It's a quick, easy, cheap reverb that when I want to use multiple instances, as somebody was pointing out. Devin Underwood, you won. Um, um, the, the thing is, what I love about that, and I love about that plugin is, is it's quick and easy. But then I find that the REQ, the most bog standard EQ that has been out forever ever that Waves makes, I use it probably on every mix 10 times. We've made a point here of using the um, free one, which is the Avid one, and it does an admirable job. So we didn't, we went out of our way not to use uh, the REQ, the Renaissance EQ all the time. But, you know, yeah, Devin, you won something. I go up in the dark unknown Where only fools and lovers go to hide Promise you won't let me go alone Yeah, don't worry, Dan. We're going to do another giveaway in like two minutes and Matt will let everybody Frickin', and this one's the big one. So this one's going to be for Rich's course, but also a one-year membership to the Academy. So, and again, as everybody can attest to, the Academy is super, super positive. Um, there's no experts in there. It's just, there's a lot of professionals in there. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of professionals in there, but there's no experts. And that's what we love about it. I go up in the dark unknown where only fools and lovers go to hide Promise you won't let me go alone Alex
Alex, it's the Richard Furch one. I don't know if you have it. And by the way, Alex, I did get your email. Alex is a great Academy member, and Alex also was in our last masterclass. So we need to, we're going to set up, this is the kind of things we do. We're now going to set up another call with all the masterclass members and go through everybody's mixes and talk about that. This is very, very exciting. Great to have you here, Alex. Thanks for the reminder. Um, and um, we're going to do one last giveaway. I think we've done enough subtle um, automation. This song didn't require a huge amount, but you could see the subtle things we're going to do. So this one, um, and we'll leave it up for five minutes. This one is, what What do we want to know? We know about your DAW. Um, I like asking this one. So the question is, is, do you play an instrument? And if so, what instrument do you play? Do you play an instrument? And if so, um, <laughs> Matt doesn't hate you, Devin. Um, do, what instrument do you play? And if you don't play an instrument, it's okay. But I'd love to know. You know, this is a conversation I had with Rick Beato a couple of years ago. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed the class, Alex. We're doing another one in a week or so. Um, oh, great, Mark. I'm glad you love there. Hi there, Dag. What, uh, Dag. Um, so do you play an instrument? And if so, what instrument do you play? And the answer, if you don't play an instrument, can be no. This is to win Richard First's... Um, Oh, thank you ever so much, Dan. Um, Richard Furch's course, which I think is one of the best courses we do, um, and also a one-year membership to the Academy. Guitar and bass, guitar, keyboards, keyboards, guitar, bass, guitars, guitars, bass, keyboards, guitar, piano, keys, drums, DW all the way. Um, yeah, many, guitar. So we'll leave this up for a couple of minutes. Everybody, let us know. Talking of guitar, look. Kevin plays the cowbell. Peter plays guitar. Oh, Scott plays the violin. That's fantastic. Mandolin. Lemaker plays guitar. Lemaker, I thought you were a bass player. Whatever I need to, Dave, that sounds like me. I figure it out. I think that's what a lot of us do once you get, once you get into like playing an instrument, you start like playing, you know, what, whatever I can. Ziggy plays guitar, but what do you play, Nate? Does voice count? No, no, being a singer. Lemaker has a bass for recording, I see. Fabio's a guitarist. Walnut shell. Play my stereo. Matthew E minor, major nine. Was that E minor or E major nine? Do you want an E minor nine? Or an E F6 major nine? Can you pat your head and blow your kazoo while playing one eighth notes on a tambourine? Guitar, guitar, keyboards and some bass. How do you mic a mandolin? Very well, no. Mandolin, if I'm playing a mandolin, I'll mic it on the body, um, definitely on the body over the strings because it's the only place where there's really any kind of output. If you mic just the strings, um, the James Bond chord. What is James Bond? Uh, 
I don't remember how it goes. Can't even think of the melody on the top of my head. You play only the black notes. Drums, keys, and everything else. Trumpet, piano, guitar, vocals, clarinet, and some viola. Uh, 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 uh. E minor 7, add 4. Um, I suppose E minor 7, add 4 would be an E minor 11. But if the 4th is just above it... Major minor seven. If it's a major chord with a minor seventh, it's a dominant seventh. Um, I, I have used uh, ribbon mics on a mandolin. I don't know of any universal um, delay time. <laughs> Gautier say this is torture. Anybody else not answered? Anybody uh anybody up? I think we've got everybody. Anybody else? Do you play an instrument? If so, what do you play? If you don't play an instrument, you can say no. Uh 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 You sure the one? Some, I thought it was a three there, not a two, but still. Um, 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 all right, Matt, you can choose somebody. And the winner is, says Sheila, Matt. And this is to win. Richard First course, the Richard First, Richard Furch course, and a one-year membership to the Academy. Drum roll, Matt, where are you? Air drums. Come on, the last giveaway. Can you text him and wake him up, please, Eric? Brrr, Matt. Matt, where are you? I'm doing my drum roll. Isn't that Mission Impossible? No, no, that's dum, 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 dum. Oh, Matt, where are you? Matt, where are you? Matt, choose the winner. We have to go. Matt, Matt, Matt. Yay! Clay won. He says, I play contact. <laughs> uh, thank you, Circle A Studios. You rock. Kevin said he was sleeping. No, he did. He was there. He was leaving us in suspenders. In suspenders. I taught myself music theory. Serious delay on my end? Probably. You've all been wonderful. Clay the hat. The hat. All right. You all rock. Thank you ever so much. If, before you go, would you please hit that like button? We have 350 people watching, and we have how many likes? 306. If you can take it up to 350, that would be absolutely stupendous. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody here that's super positive and supports each other. This is what makes the community so fantastic is there are no experts and we're all just here to help each other out. So thank you for that. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Um, who taught me my jazz chops? Um, Joe Pass by watching. Actually, I didn't watch any Joe Pass. Listening to Joe Pass, you know, just a... <laughs> I mean, all that. I just love Joe Pass. Joe Pass is the man. Okay, you all rock. Have a marvellous time recording and mixing. Thank you ever so much. Uh, 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 uh. Have a, I mean, just have a marvellous day. You all rock. And thank you. Please hit that like button. Please share. 
If you haven't yet, subscribe. Okay, have a marvelous.